Training isn't just about results, it's about managing intensity so you don't undertrain or overdo it. That's where your training load comes in, it's the best way to track how hard you're working. Let's take a closer look. Training load is calculated based on how much extra oxygen your body uses after exercise. It helps you understand how your workout affects your body, and how long you might need to recover afterward. Garmin watches with this feature show your training load for each workout, plus your acute load from recent sessions combined. This acute load gives you a snapshot of your body's stress over the past week, which is super useful for planning or adjusting your training. Older Garmin models also show training load, but they simply add up all your workouts from the past seven days. Newer models use more advanced calculations for better accuracy. Next up, the four-week load focus. When you work out with a supported Garmin device, your watch analyzes your performance in real time to show what kind of physiological impact your workout had and what type of effort was responsible for it. This analysis is based on how different intensities trigger different adaptations in your body. The four-week load focus screen breaks down your training into three intensity zones. The top number in purple bar show how much anaerobic training you've done in the past four weeks. To boost anaerobic power or sprint performance, you'll want short bursts of high-intensity, high heart rate workouts. Think 100 meter sprints or HIIT, high-intensity interval training. The number in the middle in the orange bar show how much mid to high-intensity training you've done over the past four weeks. That means how much load came from moderate to intense workouts. If you're aiming to boost your VO2 max or improve your tempo running, you'll want to go for workouts that are fairly intense, where your heart rate stays noticeably high. These sessions usually last several minutes to even over half an hour. Tempo runs are a great example of this type of training. The number at the bottom and the light blue bar show how much lower intensity training you've done over the past four weeks. That's your time spent on longer, easier sessions. Usually these are workouts where you're not too out of breath, you could even chat while doing them. A good example would be a long slow distance run. Besides showing how your training load is split across intensities, this screen also gives you feedback in text, like 1. Low, one of the training intensities is too low. 2. Balanced, your workouts cover all intensity zones pretty evenly. 3. Focused, your training leans heavily toward one zone, like lots of low intensity work. 4. Below targets, overall training load is too low. 5. Above targets, you might be overtraining. Ideally, your training load should be balanced and appropriate. This helps your fitness improve gradually. Plus, mixing up your workouts helps build a solid foundation over time. It helps improve overall athletic performance. And that wraps up our look at training load. When you combine training load with training status and training effect, and set up your heart rate and HR zones properly, you'll be in a great place to boost your performance effectively. So, in our next and final video, we'll cover how to correctly set up your heart rate and training methods.